Welcome back to my complete TART course for beginners and beyond. This video contains the 7th chapter of my course and I've decided to share this for free here on YouTube. And if you're serious about learning DART, you should consider buying my full course on Udemy. This will include over 10 hours of content and comes with premium support as well as a complete reference ebook about DART. And you can buy the full course for a discounted price by typing this URL in your browser. Ok, so let's get started. In this section we are going to work on a cool new project and learn how to process spreadsheets in Dart. This is very valuable when you have spreadsheets with hundreds or thousands of rows and you need to run some business logic and generate a report. So by completing this project we are going to learn about data processing in Dart and implement a real world application. So let me tell you a bit more about this project. You see, since I started making tutorials and courses for the Flutter community, I have been using a time tracker app to log all my activities. For example, if I'm writing a new article, I will log a time entry with a tag of blogging. Or if I'm making some YouTube videos, I'll log my time as YouTube production. And over the years I've accumulated thousands of time entries about all these different activities. And at the end of each year, I want to generate a report that tells me exactly how much time I've spent on each activity type. Now, this is something that to some extent I can do using formulas and filters in the spreadsheet themselves. However, I found that Dart is a great language to do data processing. And because Dart is a general purpose programming language, it is a lot more powerful than conventional spreadsheet software. So if you have a spreadsheet, you have an option to export this as a CSV file, which looks like this. And then you can use Dart to read this file and do some data processing. So in this section, we will build a command lineup that can process CSV files. And our command lineup will take this file as an input argument. Then it will do some number crunching and it will generate a report that looks like this. And what I like about this is that I can see where I'm spending most of my time and I can use this to make decisions about how I grow my business. So this command line tool is very useful to me and by showing you how to build it, you will learn how to do data processing in Dart. And while this project will be a command line app, once you learn about Flutter, you could take the same logic and use it to generate a cool data visualization app. For example, by showing a pie chart of the time spent on each activity type. In summary, in this project, we will learn how to read command line arguments, read a local CSV file from our system, process it line by line and extract all the information we need, and use collections to calculate and group the totals by activity type. And as we will see, this is quite easy to do and we'll create a program that does all of this in just 30 lines of code. So let's get started in the next lesson. We are now ready to start creating our command lineup to process CSV data. As a first step, we can start from our terminal. And here we can type mkdir data underscore processing. And then we can cd to that folder. And then we can type code dot. And this will start a new VS code instance using the folder that we have just created. And as a first step, we can create a new file and call this totals.dart. And then we can add the main method. So here we can type void main. And this will create an empty program. Now, the command lineup that we are about to build will take an input argument, which will be a path to a CSV file that we want to process. But how can we read this inside our program? Well, we can get all the command line arguments by adding an argument to the main method itself. So here we can type list of type string and then arguments like this. And to show you how this works, I can print the arguments like this. And here I can save and open the terminal and then I can type dart totals dot dart. And as I can see, this prints an empty list. And if I run this with dart totals a b c then we can see that the program prints a b c inside the list so this is how we can read command line arguments and since this program needs to process an input file it is invalid to run the program without any arguments so if we call this program without arguments we would like it to fail gracefully by showing us the correct way of using it to do this here we can type if arguments dot is empty and then inside it we can print usage and then dart totals dot dart 
and then input file.csv. And now that we added this, we can save the file and test things out. So here I can run dart totals.dart. And as we can see, we get this usage description. So this is fine, but we also want our program to terminate immediately when it is called without arguments. To do that, we can use a special method called exit. Now, exit is a special method that is defined inside the Dart IO library. And we can see that VS code gives us the option to automatically import this. So if we press enter, then we can see that Dart.io is already imported for us. Now, this method takes an error code that we can use to tell the system that the program has failed. So, the convention with common lineups is that they should return an error code of zero if everything went well, or return a non-zero error code if there was an error. So, in this case, we can call exit1, like this. Finally, we can declare a final input file equals arguments.first, and then we can print the input file, and then we can save our file and run the program. So if we call this without arguments, we get the usage description and exit immediately. But if we call this with an argument, then this is printed back to the console. And now that we know how to read this, we can continue on the next lesson. Now that we know how to read the file name inside our command line app, it's time to grab a CSV file that we can use for testing. To do that, you can head over to the course GitHub repo and if you navigate to projects and then data processing, here you can find this file called CSV export code with Andrea 2019. And if you open it, you can see all the contents as a preview. So this is the file that you want to download. And to do that, you can press this button over here that says row. And this will show the file in row format. And now you can right click and you can save this page to your local machine. So you can put this file anywhere you want, but I recommend saving it in the project folder for your command line app so that it is more easily accessible. So you can go ahead and save the file. And once you have done this, you should be able to open it in VS code like this. Okay, so our next step is to go back to the source code. And here we want to find a way to read the file contents. To do that, we can remove the print statement and here we can type final lines equals and then file with a capital F and then input file as an argument and then dot read as lines sync. So what this command does is to create a handle or a reference to the file using the value that was passed as an argument. And then it reads all the contents in one go and returns them as a list of strings. As a proof of this, here we can add a for loop that says for var line in lines, and then we can print each line like this. And now we can save our file, and in the terminal we can type dart totals.dart, and we can press tab to select the file that we want. So let's choose our CSV file, and if we run this, we can see that all the lines are printed. So this is all we needed to do to read a file line by line. Before we continue, I want to point out a couple of things. The first one is that if we pass an argument name for a file that doesn't exist, then here we get a file system exception, telling us that there is no such file or directory. And what follows is a so-called stack trace, which gives us more information about where this exception occurred in the source code. This includes some references to source code inside the Dart IO library, but also we have this line which points to our code and if we common click on it, it takes us exactly to the place where the error occurred. So as you continue in your coding journey, keep in mind that errors like this may seem a bit obscure, but they are there to help you. So if you read them carefully, you can more easily diagnose them and find a fix. In this case, it would be best if we could check if a file exists before trying to read all the contents and maybe show a more user-friendly message if our input argument is not a valid file path. This is easy to do in Dart, but it requires a bit of knowledge about asynchronous programming and working with futures, which is a topic that we will cover later on in the course. So for now, we will leave this code like this, but the main takeaway is that it's important to try to code defensively so that our programs can fail gracefully when something goes wrong. Just like we have done here by showing the usage description when the user forgets to pass the input argument. 
Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, we'll add all the data processing logic that we need to generate a report from our CSV file. Now, CSV stands for Comma Separated Values, and as we can see, all the data values in this file are separated by commas. And this means that if we process this file line by line, we can split each line into a list of strings using comma as the separator. So before we continue, let's try to figure out what data we need from this file. The first line is a header and it tells us the names of each column. For example, the first column is the job name. The second and third columns are the start and end time for a given task. Then we have a duration, which is the difference between the end and the start time. And then we have a comment followed by some tags and a few extra columns that we don't need. So if we wanted to calculate the total time spent, we would have to extract the duration from each line and then add all the durations together. However, the purpose of this tool is to give us a breakdown of all time spent on each activity type. So let's try to come up with some pseudocode that we can use to accomplish this. Okay, so given a list of lines that represent the contents of our CSV file, we can declare a variable called duration by tag, and this would be an empty map. Then we can remove the first line, as this only contains the header for the entire file. Then we can iterate through all the lines with a for loop, and for each line we can get all the values by splitting the line using a comma as the separator. And then we can read out the duration and tag values, which can be found at index 3 and 5. In fact, if we open the CSV file and count from the left, we can see that the job has index 0, clocked in and clocked out have index 1 and 2, duration has index 3, and so on. And we can read each column value by index. After this, we can update the duration by tag by adding the duration value. And once the loop is complete, we can print the duration for each tag. So once again, having some pseudocode is quite useful because we can sketch out a general outline for our algorithm. So let's continue on the next lesson where we will write the actual code to generate our report. We are now ready to write the code to generate our report. So first of all, we need to create our map. So here I can type final duration by tag equals to an empty map. And here I'm using a type annotation to specify that the keys will be strings and the values will be doubles. Then we want to remove the header from our list of lines. Because this is in the first line, here we can type lines.removeAt with position 0. And then inside the loop we can remove this print line and here we can get all the values by typing final values equals line.split using comma as the separator. And then we need to get the duration. Now the duration itself should be a number, however when we read the values from the CSV file we get a list of strings. Not only that, but each value in this file is contained inside a pair of double quotes, so we need to be able to remove them. So to do this, here we can type final duration string equals values at index 3 and then replace all and here we can replace all instances of double quotes with an empty string. So this will remove the double quotes and give us a string representation of the duration. Once we have this, we can type final duration equals double dot parse duration string. And this gives us the duration as a number. Next, we want to read the tag value. This is a string and we can obtain it by typing final tag equals values at index 5 dot replace all and once again we replace double quotes with an empty string. And now that we have both the duration and the tag we need to update our map and since this map will represent the total duration for each tag I think it would be better to rename this to total duration by tag just so that it's clear what we are talking about. And in general it's always a good idea to choose the scripting names for our variables as they carry more meaning and they help others read our code. Okay, so let's carry on and to update our map, here we can type final previous total equals total duration by tag with tag. So this previous total variable will contain the total duration for a given tag up to this point in the loop. 
but if it's the first time we encounter a given tag, then this value will be null. So here we need an if statement that checks if previous total is null. And if it is, we can type total duration by tag with tag equals duration. Otherwise, we already have a previous total, so we can add an else branch and type total duration by tag with tag equals previous total plus duration. So this completes our processing stage. And the next thing that we want to do is to show the results. To do that, we can add a for loop that iterates through all the entries in the map. And here we can declare a duration formatted variable and initialize it with entry dot value dot to string as fixed one so that it has only one decimal place. And then we can type final tag equals entry dot key. And then we can print the name of the tag followed by the formatted duration and we can add an h at the end so that we know that this represents the number of hours. So what we have now is a first working implementation of this program. So let's test this by saving our file. And if we open the terminal, we can run dart totals.dart and then our CSV export file. And if we run this, we can see that the report is printed to console. So this seems to work, however, it appears that one of the values has an empty key. And the reason for this is that some of the lines in this dataset don't have a tag. So it would be nice if the report could handle this by using some kind of placeholder tag. So what I suggest we do is that we modify this expression using the ternary operator. So here we can type entry.key equals to empty string, question mark, unallocated, colon entry dot key. So what this code does is to check if a tag is missing by comparing it with an empty string. And if that's the case, then we treat this as an unallocated task. And if we save and run the program again, then we can see that this works correctly. So this looks good, but in addition to showing all the totals by tag, I would also like to show the overall total. And this is an easy task because all we have to do is to create a var total duration equals to zero before the loop. And then inside the loop, we can add total duration plus equal duration like this. And finally, after this loop, we can print the total for all the tags. And this is going to be equal to the total duration dot to string as fixed so that we can format this number and then we can add an h at the end, just like we did here. And now we can save and run the program one more time. And as we can see, we now get the overall total at the end. So this concludes this project on data processing. And now that we completed this, we have some new skills that we can use to read command line arguments and read data from text files. And because this is a command lineup, all it does is to generate a text-based report. But as you make progress and learn about Flutter outside this course, you could use this code as a template and write your own apps that process CSV files and produce nice looking charts. In any case, this project was a good way to build some confidence in manipulating strings and working with maps in Dart. Okay, so let's continue on the next section. This is the end of the seventh chapter. As a reminder, you can buy the full course on Udemy and get access to all the premium content that will not be included here on YouTube. So type this URL in your browser to buy my full course for a discounted price. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this useful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.